understand why because she handled it that's been handled okay I'm not going to lead with who I am I'm going to speak to you about what and how I am and then I want to then share with you all the fancy information but we don't want to start with that I don't want you to be clouded by what she also referred to I don't want you to be clouded by my glory I want you to hear my purpose and my story. Okay. It means a lot to me. And for those who know me well, they know how serious I am about purpose and the growth process that you also spoke about. You cannot do shortcuts. If you try, the world, your creator, will set you back every single time and put you back in place and remind you that you must go through the process. Today, boss women connect. Women of substance connect. So it is then most appropriate to remind and encourage us all to be careful what you assume to be. The world glorifies the queen bee. The workers are considered to be the most collaborative insects in the world. The queen bee, however, by nature is a backbiting, narcissistic, controlling, untrustworthy, unapologetic dictator, lazy, manipulative, jealous. She spends her days mating and drinking. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Obsessing over her attractiveness and proverbial seat at the head of the table. Fearful of other female bees. Be careful what you assume to be. Bees spelled with two E's. The drones, male bees, do not work, but live to service or fertilize the queen. They do not have stingers. They do not gather nectar nor pollen. In fact, they are unable to even feed themselves without assistance. A drone's primary role is to mate with an unfertilized queen bee. Sound familiar? <laughs> Too many independent women have assumed the role of queen bee and are shocked that they seem to attract only male drones. Be careful what you assume to be. The worker bee, female bees, are responsible for all of the noblest of earthly duties. They are the true collaborators. They preserve honey, they feed drones, they build the honeycomb, they gather nectar, they transform nectar into honey, they store pollen, they remove the dead, they forage for food, they carry in water. Y'all know how I feel about water. Some of y'all know. You gotta drink your water and mind your business. <laughs> and if you didn't know, I will go ahead and slip that in. That is my quote, just so you know. Some of you are familiar with me, some of you are not. They fan the hive to maintain the proper temperature for honey production. How do worker bees produce honey? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> with each pass, the nectar is further enriched with enzymes because they pass it from worker bee to worker bee by mouth. 
So this is important. This is how they produce honey. And what do enzymes do? I'm glad you asked. Enzymes promote muscle growth, break down food to maximize nutrition intake, help with digestion, removes toxins. So they effectually speak life to each other, passing along enriching nectar to help the colony thrive. They build each other up, strengthen one another, promote each, each other's health and success, help each other receive the best of life and learning. Scientists like myself have even proven that worker bees use body language to communicate to each other. They tell each other where to find the best nectar. They warn each other of dangers all intuitively. Are you a worker bee? Or are you a queen bee? <clears throat> they even guard the hive against invaders such as wasps. They often make decisions for the colony. They feed the world with plants. Plants filter and produce breathable air and provide food to us. They do this all together in unison working harmoniously, working like a seamless network, networking even. They are masters at multitasking, yet still masters at delegating the work. They do not assume more than they are set out to handle. They are not merely busy. They are the backbone of life. The queen bee instead spends her life mating and dictating and killing and sterilizing other female bees to maintain her position in the colony. Be careful what you assume to be. Worker bees, again, are not merely busy. Instead, they are strategic, teamwork-oriented, good communicators, steadfast, helpful, and most of all, they protect each other. They are effectually good sisters good girlfriends, sharing a space of feminine energy to maximize their fullest potential and most profound impact on the world. But society teaches that worker bees are inferior to the queen bee. Society will have you believe that some women are inferior to other women. Society promotes competition amongst women for the attention of drama, for jobs, for power, Promotes backbiting, promotes manipulation, jealousy, unapologetic narcissism. But today, boss women connect. And so I remind and encourage us to unlearn society's teachings. Here are a few we must unlearn regarding our gender and business. Number one, busy ain't business. If you've seen my truck, then that's the tagline, and that's been my tagline for many years. A successful businesswoman is measured by how busy she is. The busier, the more successful. A successful businessman, however, is measured by how much leisure time he has. The more leisure time, the more successful. I need to change that. Number two. Stop commingling funds. I'm going to say it again because I can tell that it's hitting home for some of you. In my consulting firm, the number one failure issue for all of my clients has been commingling funds. When I first started my business, 20-some years old. <laughs> I remember the banker was shocked that I wanted to open two different accounts, one for receivable, one for payable. The white man cautioned me that I was getting in over my head. <laughs> that was 20 years ago. And now I have about 10 accounts, and they're supposed to be for each function of the business. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. Because it is too easy when you have full access 
to commingle your funds. When you commingle your funds, you don't treat your business funds properly, and then you find yourself having failure, and the number one failure for business is financing. So there will be times where my business, my business has plenty of money. I might have five dollars. And that's because I'm running my business properly and I'm not commingling funds. So I want to stay on that just one second there. But society teaches that men are best suited to manage a household finances, best suited to bring in the finances. Society teaches that women are wasteful and impulsive with money, shop too much even, fail to prioritize financial commitments. We must change that. Number three, to manage housework is not inherently inferior. I'm going to repeat that again. To manage housework is not inherently inferior. She spoke of that. She gave you the analogy. All of the nurturing and the household principles that we are innately equipped with, they are the best skills for a thriving business. Like the worker bee, the work is necessary to balance of the entire world. And like your quote of the day, if you're not networking, then you're not working. I'd like to add, if you are overworking, then your network mm -hmm. is not working. <clears throat> and then we refer back to number one, because busy, ain't business. Even worker bees know this. Even the queen bee knows it. That's why she sits back and she lets those who don't know do all the work. And she takes the glory. Number four, you have to commit to learning something. I'm so glad that she point, really stayed on this part. This is another big failure point for a lot of business owners. They want to immediately be where I am. They want to immediately be where they perceive someone successful to be. They want to go from point A to point B, and they want it now. It didn't happen like that for me. It doesn't happen like that for anybody who's telling you the truth. I didn't become even a scientist overnight. That was fun. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I got it in me. Flash you. <laughs> Shake it off. Okay. A woman in STEM. Mm. What did you say? Woman. <laughs> <laughs> and then one who's worn her natural hair, her, oh. yes, yeah, it's like, oh, 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 so like what she's learning. So you can't be a successful business owner and just perfect installing lashes. Right. Clearly, that is a skill set that she has perfected. But now she's got to perfect and learn about shipping and merchandising and social media marketing and all the things. You must commit to learning something. If you wish to be successful and have an impact, I always make sure to add that part because we forget that a core to success, especially if you're doing it with the right purpose, is impact. If you're not impactful and no one is being poured into, if no one can say, I learned something from Tigress, I learned something from Amor, and all they know is that you're in business, you're not authentically successful in my opinion. You have the facade of success, 
But our learning, and this is one thing I learned from my mother and my father, my learning is not for me alone. So yeah, did I get these degrees? Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, I did. But it's not for me only. If I intend to be authentically impactful, it becomes your information because this is our village. And it is important. And it is not about me being the queen bee. It is about the colony instead. Society teaches not to aspire for higher learning and enlightenment, and rather to assume outward beauty and manipulate our divine femininity to meet our life needs like the queen bee, but that is unnatural. There are infinite examples of this truism amongst the animal kingdom. Worker bees are part of the animal kingdom as well. Female animals like worker bees are entrusted with great responsibility for the earth's balance and thriving. Not ever believe that you're inferior. <clears throat> Do not ever just assume the namesake of woman. There is so much power in our gender. Your feelings, this is number five, are only generally valid. I know some of y'all are not gonna like this. We're gonna get a little deep. In business, they're seldom valid or even minimally considered. Women are capable of emotional intelligence. The world teaches women that they are overrun by their emotions and cannot handle business well due to this character flaw. Again, in nature, women are consistently strong-willed and sound of mind. The worker bees make the decisions for the colony, not the queen bee. Did you know that? Number six. She touched on this again, which I love. And she spoke about how you keep it fresh and, and, and you remain aligned. And I agree with her there as well. There's meditation and you listen. The irony that a great speaker must first have to listen. So you would think, because these are, these are not just my words. You would think that it's just my words. It's just what Tigress wants to say. It's not. I actually had another, much like what she said, I had a whole other speech and I was ready to go with it, honey. I was ready. And then I said, okay, well, and then I even read it out and my mom was like, oh, I don't know. And I said, no, I meditated again and said, this is what we're going with. And he's not ever, she's not ever let me down. However you perceive your creator, gender or gender non-specific. Number six, organize and plan everything. The world teaches that women are scatterbrained and further that multitasking is demonstrative of this fact. Multitasking is often vilified. You're doing too many things, you need to find one thing to do. There is no such thing as one thing to do. We just discussed that. If you can only do one thing well, you will fail. I can guarantee you, I can sign off on it, you will pay. <coughs> the worker bee demonstrates that organizing, planning, and multitasking is actually one of the highest skill sets. Worker bees collaborate. Worker bees connect. Today, boss women connect. Connect physically to collaborate, to build, to strengthen, to support and empower, to protect each other, connect metaphorically, to remember your worth. I get this a lot of times. People, well, you, you're kind of like a goody two shoes. It seems like it comes easy to you. You had uh, your mother and your father there. Your, your dad was military. My dad was also a homeless drunk. There are stories that you don't see that will be behind the scenes. 
he still poured into me very greatly. He made sure he was also in more. We must dispel societal myths and tropes to unlearn and realize our role in the greater scheme of business, civilization, and life, to accept your full purpose. Too many of us are tiptoeing around our glory. We're tiptoeing because we feel that we see others who display queen bee characteristics and we want to mute ourselves in their presence. I'm here to tell you that there is no natural muting for a woman. Each and every one of you is divine beyond measure. I don't care if you think, well, Tigress's hair is big and it's beautiful and all the things. It doesn't matter. There's a beauty in your eyes, your walk, your speech. Just the way she said it, when you put your mind to something, we may do something just somewhat different, slightly different. And in that slight difference is this infinite magnitude of glory. And I am huge on this part. I've spoken to a lot of younger women to make sure that as they start this journey, that they do not forget how infinitely beautiful they are. Just like she says, that when you wake up, do nothing. You don't have to do a thing yet. You are magnificent. And there are thoughts and plans that have been laid on your heart that they won't be mine. They're yours. And you need to surround yourself with women who want to connect and not divide. Because division is not a successful mindset. <clears throat> To be a worker bee is not inferior to the queen bee. To be a boss is to undertake the work that many cower from. The queen bee cowers from the work and hides behind her throne, giving little toward building and supporting her colony, getting drunk off the nectar of arrogance and paranoia of the effectiveness of worker bees. She is tormented for her entire life. To be a boss woman instead is to know your worth, make room at the table for all women, and maximize your potential. And like the worker bee, positively impact the world while encouraging, supporting, and empowering other women and dispelling myths. I've had it many times, and the, the one thing that I do love when I come away from speaking engagements or uh, workshops is that some may have an expectation. Now, those who are aligned, they see me immediately, and I find that very interesting. Those who are not aligned, they see an outward appearance initially, and they may perceive me as a queen bee. Sherelle knows the difference. Those who have been around me for even a little bit of time, they know I don't, I don't roll like that at all. I'm a worker bee and proud to be a worker bee. I'm proud to be a part of the colony of women, black women, brown women, who have infinite beauty to give to the world. And I desire nothing less than to be a part of that colony and remain connected. I would like for you all to repeat this affirmation, please. Sentence by sentence, just three sentences. I am woman. I am woman. I am, woman. I am akin to the magnificence 
of this world. I am the king of the magnificent of this world. You know what? Can you please stand? Yes. <laughs> I am woman. I am akin to the magnificence of this world. My worth is within and beyond my femininity. Be careful what you assume to be. degrees at this point and again I speak with gratitude not with arrogance because I believe arrogance is ignorance my bachelor's degree is in agricultural education and environmental science my master's is in agricultural economics and rural development my PhD will be in energy and environmental systems and economics and I am a month away from finishing my law degree. Awesome. All right. <laughs> I have the great honor of owning and operating Pursuit of Happiness Corporation since 2010. And it is a multi-tiered consulting firm and, of course, the science. That is my love. That's my first love is science. And I, look, I'll geek out on you. If you couldn't tell by the speech, right, I'll geek out on you. Just let me know when you're ready because I'll be excited to be talking about some science, okay? Honey, honey you, you say, wait, she, she, she looks so cool. She, she will I ain't never met a cool scientist. I can, I can, I can definitely display the uncool side. Y'all be like, what in the world? Okay, never mind, Tigers. I didn't want to know all about that. Yeah, never mind. Like, that wasn't that. You went too far, girl. Um, uh, <laughs> it also incorporates performing arts. A beautiful mother who is recording. She was a professional model uh, turned seamstress for 30 years. That was one of the first entrepreneurs that I learned from, as well as my mother and my father. My father was in construction. I already mentioned that he was 82nd Airborne. My grandmother, a homemaker, and she was <laughs> bad honey with upholstery when I tell you she was bad. She just, I don't want it to be this this week. I want it to be that. <laughs> she was bad. So I incorporated that love of performing arts. Uh, she introduced me in modeling school when I was 12, and I've been modeling ever since and teaching modeling. And then the other arena, of course, is business economics, business legitimacy, and that's the another part of those passion areas where I wanna make sure what she referred to too often we settle for working under the table and we're fearful for whatever reason to step out and be you know and we feel like oh well i can't do it because no one's going to allow me to lease from them i'm actually known for like we're going to dispel that myth. Come see me. Anybody tell you no, come see Tigress. <laughs> we get it together. Let's go together. Sometimes it's, 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 it's a wonderful dynamic how if you walk in your, your purpose and you, like you say, you pour into one another. I've literally seen it where someone will tell me, well, we were, we were turned down. We were told no. 
We were told we couldn't open a bank account. You got us set up, but they said, no, we were missing paperwork. I just walk in with you, honey. We, oh, hi, how are you doing? Let's get that done right now. I'm so sorry, there must have been confusion. Must have been so much confusion. <laughs> when they came the last time, we were just confused, really. Let's, not, let's make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> right? And that's without me even introducing myself. You have to, she said it, and I love that this is aligning. Half the battle, he said it too. I think she's like that. Half the battle, and I guarantee you, because in the beginning I thought that, back in the day I thought that she was like, she just making all this stuff up. Come on, let's. Half the battle is the confidence. Yes. They're not at your house. The bacon ain't in your stuff yet. You walk in there and you are I am. You are a reflection of I am. Your business can be one day old. You are. You are the sis. <laughs> it is thus it, we are. <laughs> so be, and it's so beautiful to be able to marriage that, uh, that analogy with the worker bee and all. And at first, admittedly, I thought, I said, maybe I am going a little too science because I could have gone a little bit further, but I said, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it back a bit. But if you look also, if you take a moment as you're going through your, your process of starting your business and growing your business, it is also an experience. It is a process. It's okay to fail. And you know, we scientists, we fail forward. It's so funny because for me, it's, I, I've been able to incorporate those principles on this side. I, I don't get upset with a no. I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna, I'm going to find out, I'm going to ask questions so I can figure out why. Why did you give me enough? Okay, so you now you're selling one, two, and three are not in place. Okay, well, then I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. There. One, two, and three is now in place. What are we doing now? Use those principles. Don't give up. Don't allow anyone to put you into, don't even accept, don't assume that role of queen bee. It's a, not a, a lot of nonsense that goes into that realm. It doesn't, it doesn't represent the black woman, the goddess that we really are. And I'm sure that someone told you today, but if they haven't, I love you. Thank you so much for the opportunity.